the mother of special forces, the leader of the Cobra unit, the legendary soldier, the boss. Few other non-playable characters have ever formed such a wide emotional connection as the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3. Her involvement in the game's memorable story and finale have left a lasting impression. For how well known the series is for its complexity and craziness, the boss is an outlier in her elegant storytelling and grounded persona. The woman who could be tough, kind, harsh, caring, intimidating, nurturing, and tragic is a versatile and fantastic character. You first meet the boss as only a voice. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. Despite an abrupt introduction with a harsh tone shift, the conversation effectively shows how well Boss knows Snake. The conversation is troubled, but there is an unpronounceable sense of care and respect between the two, like a teacher and student, or a mother and son. Snake mentions that he still needed to be taught how to think like a soldier, but Boss explains how that's unteachable. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. That a soldier like him can't believe in politics, superiors, or ideology. Because the job of a soldier is only the mission. Afterwards, she coaches Snake and the player for all the new gameplay mechanics, as they're based on her techniques. The little bit of gameplay influence that Boss has is here. In close quarters, Snake can now take down enemies in one move regardless of difficulty, or grab hold of them for questioning or execution. These actions are situationally beneficial and require precise thinking to pick your spot and avoid detection. CQC is tricky in how you hold a combination of buttons and maintain correct pressure on said buttons, or else things go wrong very fast. Everything you can do in close quarters is tied to the techniques that the boss innovated, and you can even hear boss herself describe how to properly use these techniques and even what to watch out for. Given how tricky some of the CQC is, there's an understated cleverness for boss to figure this stuff out and teach it back to us. It also becomes easier to understand boss's skill once you use CQC to manage enemies with no alerts, as you're overcoming situations boss herself would have had to deal with, and she hardly seems like someone who would allow herself to get any alerts. The best challenges are very satisfying to overcome, and it's strangely bonding that you've overcome what boss herself is set up to have done a long time ago. These moves are presented as advanced techniques, for those who need to maximize their resources and minimize waste, but still finish the mission. This is the underscoring image of the boss through your CQC, of someone whose techniques and skill make her the best and the most efficient soldier there is. Now you have to somehow live up to that. Boss is teaching Serve Snake well to dispose of some goons and help Snake secure his target. Boss is probably proud of her student before announcing her betrayal and severely injuring him. From teacher figure, to rival who outclasses you, to a target who must be taken care of. Boss already has several roles. Now a broken arm would normally be enough to put a soldier on the shelf, but Boss taught Snake better than that. Once Snake returns with his new mission, Boss is waiting and soundly destroys him once again. She's openly telling Snake to leave and run away from his mission, and when asked why she defected, she simply says that she didn't, that she's loyal to her end and to her purpose. As the story is told from Snake's perspective, Boss becomes more of a mystery. His story revolves around not knowing why Boss defected and struggling with the reality that he'll have to kill her. The player is in even more mystery than Snake, so we're left to piece together the boss that Snake knows, the boss that everyone else knows, and boss's true intentions. Boss also doesn't feel as much of a bad guy as the obvious walking cartoon villains that surround her, so it's very easy to be just as confused as Snake when it comes to boss's allegiance. With the smart structure of her story and how boss always has moments of style and character without losing her mystique, she's an easy character to get drawn into. Every scene she's in, it always feels like she's the person in charge and is the one everyone else would call the leader. We will fight with you once more. Welcome back, boss. 
As I said earlier, Boss's reasons for defecting are not made clear until the end, but during this time, the Boss's character is masterfully presented. In your first minutes after returning to the field, she once again gets the better of Snake and destroys his gun. In her short time seeing Snake, she's figured out his mission, predicted his fighting style, and countered in ways that leave him defenseless. If her overwhelming ability wasn't demoralizing enough, the entire time she's been telling you to leave. You're outmatched, and this isn't worth continuing. She's mastered her techniques to the point that she's untouched by enemy attacks for most of the game, and is so good at what she does, she can wear bright white gear that's easy to see, and you'll still never hit her. Much like she is, Boss's look is a bit of an outlier in how unmonstrous and regular she is. Her face isn't vibrant, she doesn't speak in a ridiculous manner like her comrades, and she's the only one with nothing exaggerated about them. Despite not having a gimmick, over-the-top abilities, or intense expressions, Boss still manages to grab so much of the attention in her scenes. Whether by direction, body language, and physical actions performed, the Boss always feels like the person you should be paying attention to. Her presentation is unique in the video game industry as she's visually normal without losing a sense of style. She walks and talks in a noble yet regretful way, like someone who's doing their job very well, even when it's something they don't like. Even as horrific events like her friend is dying occur, or she has to go through the pain of recounting tragic stories, she doesn't stop, even if she's clearly shaken. Later boss representations show her to be viewed as almost holy in some circles, and her bright white attire portrays her as pure and untainted, but also uncompromising and bold. Despite her simple look, a few moments of humanity do pop through the cover and give glimpses of warmth and hidden emotional trouble. Boss has a very simple, but memorable look. Boss keeps a distance for a while, so a lot of her details come from others. While Snake is her central relationship in the story, it's really interesting to see how the rest of the cast connect with her. Eva paints an interesting picture of Boss once she's in your ear. Compared to the others Eva speaks to, the Boss seems very polite and friendly despite her harsh actions against Snake. There even seems to be a bit of camaraderie between the two, which Eva points to being because they're both traitors. Eva becomes much more relevant to Boss much later, but it's still neat to see another spy find information about Boss. Ocelot is the young boy who shows off, attempts to be commanding, and is trying way too hard to be stylish. He's trying to be a star on the battlefield, but Boss cuts through his fantasy and takes him down a notch. Even though it isn't explicit, unless you bother Eva enough, Boss and Ocelot's relationship is like that of a rebellious teenager and his mom. He tries to look cool in front of his friends, she breaks his toys and tells him to go to his room. It's similar to a relationship with Snake, but with no warmth or care, like he's just any other low rank soldier who's wearing the costume of a commander. Despite all that, Ocelot clearly has some respect for Boss and follows her orders, even though she's technically not his superior. It's a cool in-universe touch that even though Boss doesn't actually have authority over anyone besides the Cobra unit, she still feels like the Boss. The closest thing Boss has to an equal among her group, Volgan is the true authority of this operation. But you wouldn't know that based on the scenes he shares with the Boss. Despite his rank, he frequently feels like a grunt who got a promotion, a loud, senseless soldier making as much noise as possible to make his presence and will felt. Shortly after reprimanding Ocelot, the boss reports the loss of one of her Cobra comrades in a reserved manner that shows inner pain at the loss of her friend, but is overall composed. That is then followed by Volgan violently lashing out at a wall in anger as if he cannot restrain himself at the thought of losing a valuable team member, or losing to an enemy. These two are harsh contrasts despite supposedly being partners in crime. Volgan is presented to be at a similar level authority and threat-wise with the boss, but they feel as different as you possibly can. She handles loss with grace and restraint. He handles loss with wild and reckless anger. Even as the game progresses and she grows more annoyed at Volgan's antics, she's clearly holding herself back even at his most insulting practices. Later, Boss reports the loss of two more of her friends, 
figures out the enemy plan, and develops a counter plan just as fast. Compare that to punching a barrel. Damn it. Volgen is one of the best measuring sticks to see what's so different about the boss, as Volgen is almost presented to be the monster that the boss should be when the boss acts like the colonel that Volgen should be. Around here is also where Snake tries to explain the bond he has with the boss, which he finds hard to define. She was like a mother, and my master. And your lover? It went deeper than that. Deeper? Half of me belongs to the boss. While a bit vague, it highlights how a bond like theirs can be so strong even if it's hard to explain what exactly their connection is. The other side of this is their next scene together where she reveals Snake by slowly picking apart weaknesses in his technique and giving advice to him about the nature of hiding your true self. What is this fairy disguise? It's gonna rub off on you, and then you'll lose sight of who you really are. While a good showcase of how Boss is still like a mom, even when she's a rival, the true highlight comes in establishing who's really in charge. Stay out of this! <laughs> boss is selective in who gets the more gentle teaching methods. The Boss was the one character who I always found interesting while playing the game, and moments like her knocking down Volgan were the right type of commanding actions that gave a positive impression to my experience. I actually didn't enjoy Snake Eater my first time through as a game, but Boss was my biggest positive. I found a lot of the sneaking to be annoying, the navigation to be really confusing, and a lot of the exposition to be slow and dull, even by MGS standards. Despite this, the story of the game and the characters all had me interested. The Boss specifically felt so weird in this game by being the only one who wasn't weird. She felt like an undefeatable master who always had your number, and the idea that Snake could even hang with her was unthinkable. She never felt like a bad guy as much as someone in my way, so I felt conflicted about having to kill someone who I didn't really perceive as a villain, much like Snake was conflicted about killing his mentor. Boss was my hook to stick with the game, and my anchor to want to give it another chance to better appreciate it for what it was. Shortly after being responsible for your capture, she shows up once you're being interrogated, and is apparently so confident in how she trains Snake, that she outright tells Volgan that he won't succeed at breaking him. Some seeds of interest are planted as it's revealed that Boss planted a tracer on Snake, which was apparently done so covertly that even Snake himself never noticed. Now that's skill. Sensing treachery, Boss's loyalty is challenged by Volgan, though it's clear he doesn't want to be direct about it. He pushes Boss into proving her loyalty, and in a complex series of events, Snake's eye is lost. Boss punishes the displayed recklessness, and retains Volgan's trust. The Boss is pretty decisively seen as the real commander here, even covertly giving Snake some help and advice. She's offering Snake a way to escape, but also telling him to get away. She just wants him to get out of this alive. Eventually, Snake breaks free, gathers his non-food equipment, and once again meets Boss. Her first words at seeing him again... Why'd you come back? Boss is simultaneously merciful and merciless in her approach as she seemingly gives Snake opportunity to defend himself, right after taking advantage of the fact that he now has a blind side. Another fight between these two ensues. The rhythm of this kind of rivalry usually forges a bitter and angry mood, but between these two, it's reluctant and sad. Snake uses more of their techniques and gets closer to finishing Boss before being taken down again. These one-on-one -on -one fights tell an interesting story by themselves. Boss broke Snake to stop him from coming after her. She exploited his weaknesses and pushed him into leaving of his own accord. She sees through his disguise, smiles at the sight of him, but ultimately shows him more holes in his moves while providing warnings. These fights seem like weird teaching sessions where Snake is slowly being given experience and knowledge to improve with, especially compared to the systematic beatdown Volgan gave Snake or the blunt takedown she gave Volgan. What Boss warns Snake of also evolves, from being too inadequate to take her on, to not having a good purpose to fight, to not knowing the dangers of how the mission will affect you. While fighting is usually seen as something thrilling for the audience to watch, Boss's fight scenes serve well 
to bring more intrigue to Boss's character, highlight her abilities, and also work to show a side of Boss that she really only shows to Snake, her student and fellow soldier. After an absurd amount of exposition, Boss is trusted to take the extremely valuable Philosopher's Legacy somewhere safe. Right before Boss leaves, she tells Volgan to fight like a warrior, and he actually doesn't use outside help or much of his ridiculous offense until halfway. A lot of the characters find something prideful in acting in the boss's wishes. Ocelot as well acts to the wishes of the boss and even parrots her words back at Volgan with no regard for rank. Fight like a man, Volgan. More pieces fall in line as the boss sets Eva free to tell Snake where to find her. And while it's not brought up again until later, most of her actions from here on are acting in line with the boss's wishes. Eva admits that she's envious of the special bond between the two of them and relays the message, I've never seen someone with such clear eyes. However much Snake and Boss are supposed to be enemies, she still cares for him, and she wanted him to know that. After Snake finishes off Volgan and makes it to the lake, Boss fries Groznygrad and delivers a final monologue. Boss opens up about how she sees the world, how she sees conflict, and the hidden history that brought them both there. While the philosophy and conspiracy stuff is a bit dry, her history of repeated loss and steady resiliency is really captivating. Due to an unknowable organization, soldiers like them are seen as a disposable way of keeping war alive, with Boss herself being a sacrifice that they just kept taking from. She was first irradiated by atomic testing, which, much like Snake, left her infertile. Then, her father was killed shortly after telling her about the organization that they both are a part of. Then, despite leading a vital organization in their war effort, her baby was stolen from her by the same organization that her father warned her of. Despite all this, because of her loyalty to her country, she kept working for the government, being sent as an unprotected subject to space, where an alternate viewpoint of the world sparked an idea that it should be united. Now only left with her student to speak to, she barely feels the emotion that would haunt a normal person who's gone through these trials, only occasionally feeling the pain of what she's lost. Boss thanks Snake for listening to her, admitting that she's content that she got to say everything. And as sweet as that idea might be, there's a grim awareness to it. Boss and Snake know that however much they care for each other, they're expected to play their role in this fight, and are powerless to do anything about it. As I said earlier, Boss goes between being a mother, a rival, and a teacher figure, and here she's all three. The way she talks about raising and loving Snake is very much like that of a mom. It's never talked about in detail, but that makes it feel all the more personal. These two know what they've been through together, and very little needs to be said. The way she tells her story and the way things are, is like the most depressing lesson a teacher will ever have to tell their student. Tragedy followed her because of how much loyalty meant to her, despite how little it meant to others. And as Snake is poised to take a role, it will likely follow him as well. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. She also ends this by initiating one last fight for themselves. A last blaze of glory enforces conditions that make this an impossible to escape battle. She acknowledges both the tragic and triumphant elements of combat very quickly and pushes Snake to do more than he has before, which is what rivals ultimately do in stories. Even her look for this fight, while not my personal favorite look, does fit with the underlying story that despite her seeming purity and simplicity, she has been scarred by war and has a reminder of the pain she's felt. She's lost her fertility to atomic tests, she's lost her father and her child, been forced to kill her old lover, and as heartbreaking as all that is, she's powered on through. In many ways, this scene is Boss exposing herself, in more ways than one, as more than just the myth that's been built around her. Previously, Boss said that a soldier is a political tool and nothing more. And now you see the strain and torment that can cause. A soldier can only ever believe in the mission, because they have to be willing to let everything they love fall apart. This sobering speech might be a bit on the heavy side, 
but it fills in enough of the blanks of the boss to ground her from a legend to a soldier who's gone through much more mental and moral strain than would have ever otherwise been known. Unfortunately, once it's known just how human and worn down the boss is, it becomes your job to kill her. On a side note, I actually don't like her boss battle as far as gameplay goes. I just found it really annoying to play. But the setting is unique, the music slowly coming in is cool, and the almost cowboy duel vibe of it is something really special to the series. Finally, once she's down by your hand, she hands Snake the Philosopher's Legacy and the Patriot, symbolically passing the role of the ultimate patriotic soldier to him. Then, with her final words, she commands Snake to finish her. There can only be one boss, and one Snake. What follows around her is some over-the-top visuals, but they're a great insight into how Snake feels at the moment regarding his former mentor. Now that Boss is gone, it's worth trying to summarize what the character of the Boss was. From the Boss we as a player have seen, she's a walking contradiction of a role. She's kind, but vicious. She's blunt, but tact. She's ordinary, but she's commanding. She's the perfect example of how someone can become so different once they're in their working environment. She's very polite, courteous, and friendly around seemingly normal people, but once she's a soldier though, she's methodical, blunt, and cutting. Boss really feels like someone who doesn't want to do the things she's doing, but feels that she has to, to the point that she's constantly suggesting to her pupil to just go away before things get worse for him. Her personality shifts depending on who she's with and what's going on, but not in a disjointed random way. Her position and personality clash and meld with the others in such a way that she's constantly interesting to watch and listen for. Throughout the game, she's a motherly teacher figure, an actual mother commander, a co-worker, and a friend. And it's all great stuff. MGS3's plot and story could have felt more distant than it actually was, but the boss held everything nicely together. The boss is a fascinatingly complex character who excels in so many roles in the story, it's incredible. Now, the boss's story doesn't end at her death. Once Snake lands, he's informed via tape recorder about the boss's real mission. Just as she said, she didn't defect. She was true to her purpose. She played the part of a traitor to get closer to the Philosopher's Legacy, which included betraying Snake. However, once Volgan used one of his gift nukes prematurely, she and the US got the blame, meaning that the only way for the government to cover itself and avoid nuclear destruction was to kill the boss. If any character could symbolize loyalty and patriotism, it's the boss. Everything she could have valued was sacrificed for her country, and she never wavered. Her child, her lover, her body, and her life. As tragic as her story is, it makes Boss's story that much more noble, that she refused to give up on what she believed in and what she dedicated her life to, even as it was going to destroy her. That everything she built up could never be credited to her, that she has no true legacy that people will know of, because of what her name will be tied to. That's part of what makes Boss's final confession to Eva and Snake so powerful, that she would give her story to the person she knew would value her words and effort more than anyone else, and whose future accomplishments can be traced back to the way she raised and trained him. Boss was loyal to her end, to her purpose. So she did what she could to improve her most loyal student and gave everything for her country. Regardless of how you feel about nationalistic pride, there's something engaging to this. Either the morbid discarding of someone so lovingly dedicated, or the heroic final sacrifice of someone who ultimately saved the world from total annihilation. Her final story of dedication and sacrifice is one of the most powerful endings to any video game and ultimately redeems Boss to Snake and the player, as the hero she was. The boss is a character who has only ever appeared in one game, Snake Eater. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a fan favorite of the series despite not being the best selling of the bunch, and among the many things that make MGS3 stand out, 
The character of the boss is one that's the most firmly entrenched in people's memories of playing this game. Boss was built in a different way to every other character in the series, that you had to slowly piece her together to find some answers. Her character was a strong hook into the story and made so many moments mentally and emotionally captivating. Even before the confession, Boss would have been an incredible character of many sides and complexities who draws the player in. From her interesting relationships to all the characters, to her cool, stylish outfit, to her different fighting style, to the way she's presented as a rival but also a caring figure, she would have had something to appreciate no matter what. The ending of MGS3, however, was the moment that cemented her now legendary status for those who've played the game. If any character has come to represent the emotional power of games, especially outside of RPGs, it's the boss. Thanks for watching, and I'm sorry to people who've been looking forward to this for like two years now or something like that. I hope you'll check out the other three, which didn't take as long as this one, but I actually still think are really cool. I hope you'll check out my channel, hope you'll check out my videos, and... And I'd be interested to see what your guys' original impression of the boss was. And I hope the next video I upload doesn't take 40 years to make.